Great to have you back here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's go back in history and I'm starting with the year 1960, a country that is, of course uh, used to be called the French Opa Volta. Um, it was on this day that it became a republic or gained independence from France. Um, it, the name eventually turned to Burkina Faso in 1984. But, you know, this started when uh, French troops arrived and claimed the area in 1896. There was the Mossy resistance that ended with the capture of the capital Ouagadougou in 1919. Certain provinces uh, from Ivory Coast then were united into what was called the French Upper Volta. It became a, uh, an autonomous republic in the French community on December 11th in 1958. And July 11th in 1960, France agreed to Upper Volta becoming fully independent. Of course, this brings, you know, more of the conversation with regards to Thomas Sankara and his efforts with, um, you know, um, you know, modernizing and fixing Burkina Faso in the 80s. The French former colony or former French colony gained independence as Upper Volta in 1960, like I mentioned, and the name Burkina Faso, which means land of incorruptible people, was adopted in 1984. Um, on uh, the 2nd of August, to be precise, President Sankara's initiative, you know, was what brought forth the, the change of name from Upper Volta to Burkina Faso. And uh, the presidential decree was confirmed by the National Assembly on the 4th of August, also in 1984. But, you know, for this day in history, 4th of August, um, it was the day that um, Burkina Faso or French Upper Volta, you know, gained independence from France. Oh, that was really an interesting story. And really, when you take a look at the story of, you know, African countries and their independence, it's one to really marvel at because it was really one of struggles, struggles here and there because of the heavy influence of colonization by the Portuguese, the French, the Belgians, the British, you know, just the story of colonization really shaped where we are, who we are as a people. And for me, when I look at the story of independence of most African countries, I am reminded of powerful women who stood up for that. So we're talking about Nzinga, I'm the queen of Nzinga, Matoba and Matamba. She fought for the independence of Angola um, from the Portuguese. I'm um, talking about um, this other lady, that I can't remember her name, also fought for the independence of, uh, what's this country now? Um, I think Tanzania. And um, I'm also talking about um, Fumilaya Ransom, Ransom Kuti, who fought against colonialists. So when I take a look at women in African history, I feel that it's just sad that their role in history seemed to have been, you know, metaled down, especially when you come to schools in history and how they don't even talk about that. But it's fantastic to know that women do play a role and that Africa right now is, is a lot you know, better from where we used to be back in the 90s. Couldn't, and still talking well, about, well, still well, talking I mean, I was about just women. I say that, you know, when, when, you know, independence was given, you know, in 1960s, you know, to a couple of countries, including Nigeria, uh, the expectations for growth were, you know, a lot different. And there's always the argument of, you know, you know, whether a lot of African countries could have been in a way much better place than they currently are, because a lot of them are still third world co uh, countries. Um, if the grip of the colonialists were completely taken off you know but it seems like even since then in the 60s the 50s whenever you got your independence there's still you know these colonial masters still having some grip on you know these countries yeah and that's it's, why it's, they're still it's the concept they called neocolonialism yes definitely we're still talking about women um in 1962 um the woman marilyn monroe was found dead she was an award-winning actress she was a comedic talent she was remarkable you know and it's just um, unfortunate that she was actually um, producing a movie, you know, acting on a movie when she passed on. Um, this was uh, in 1962. Her, she was 36 year old at that time. Her body was found dead on August 5th. It was a, it was a Sunday. So two doctors had come into a, um, to her house. Um, these people, the, this, the doctors were called in by a concerned um, homekeeper. And uh, when they came in, they couldn't access her room. They had to break in. And then they found her, you know, lying dead on the bed with, with, a, with an empty bottle um, that they say could have been uh, sleeping pills that she overdosed on. Others say it could have been drugs, it could have been suicide, or it could have been administered. There were lo just lots of controversy regarding how she passed on. But she was married um, at least twice. She was 
about to be remarried again when she um, sadly passed on. And I think one of the great things for me about her is her name, Marilyn Monroe. Very catchy, you know, unique, easy to remember. Uh, but she was actually not born Marilyn Monroe. She changed her name to Marilyn Monroe in 1948. Her real name is, um, let's get that out. Her real name is um, Norma Jean Mortensen, born June 1st, 1926. So it was on this day Marilyn Monroe passed on. You know, um 36. Pretty well, young. Obviously. Yeah, same thing we said, you know, with regards to uh, Bruce Lee, when we spoke about Bruce Lee in uh, yes. history. You know, pretty young, in the, in the 30s when they passed. Um, but in the short time that they were alive, same thing with Tupac, same thing with Notorious B.I.G. Uh, in the short time that they were alive, the impact that they had on entertainment um, is still spoken huge. about yes. in 2021. Yes. So you can imagine someone who died in 1963 at the age of 36, but left enough impact in the industry that we're still speaking about today. Um, and that's, you know, what, you know, a legacy should look, should look like. You know, you don't have to, you know, be alive for 80 years before you leave that legacy. In the little time that you have, give as much as you can to. It sadly also, some of them died from very, very funny um, or sad, you know, ways, you know, with which they died. But 36, Pretty it's young. interesting. So that's what we have for you today. 1962, the death of American actress Marilyn Monroe. And the independence of uh, Burkina Faso in 1960 on this day also. Stay with us. Our first major conversation for today, we are going to be talking about taxes and taxation in Abuja. The FCT Authority has introduced an environmental pollution levy on uh, business owners, and we're going to be getting into that conversation right after this uh, short break. Stay with us here on The Breakfast. <music> 